In this video, I'm gonna show you this cool effect here where you can create these boxes that grow and shrink when you hover on and off of them. But not only that, the text that's inside the boxes when you're not hovering over one of them kind of blurs and disappears. It's a pretty cool compound effect and it's not too difficult to do inside of Generate Blocks. We're not gonna have to write any CSS or JavaScript in order to do this. We're gonna do it all from the editor inside of Generate Blocks, thanks to the selector system that allows us to do some really complex things. If this sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. A huge thanks to today's sponsor, Dear Designer. If you excel at building websites, but struggle when it comes to design or just have too much work to handle, Dear Designer can help. Whether it's branding, web design, illustrations, print, or social media graphics, Dear Designer has a team of professional designers ready to take your project to the next level. Their monthly flat rate pricing makes having a professional designer on your team affordable, especially since you can put them on as many client projects as you'd like, or even have them work on your own agency's needs. We've had hundreds of members of the admin bar use Dear Designer, and the feedback I've heard has been incredible, so much so that I've even used them myself when I've been overloaded. The process is simple, you get unlimited revisions, and I love that you can request the design files to make tweaks on your own. Best of all, it's all month to month, so you're not locked into some never-ending contract. Give Dear Designer a try by using the link down in the description, and use our code TAB25 and get 10% off your first three months. All right, so I've gone ahead and already added all the elements to our page here, but I haven't done any styling to anything other than here on my section, I did give it just a little bit of padding. So let's walk through what elements we have on the page. So like I said, we have a section here. Inside of is an inner container that I've labeled wrapper. That's just setting the max width of my content here, which is just my site's default content max width. Now inside of that, I have four containers, one for Italy, Japan, Egypt, and the United States. And inside of each one of those, I have an H2 headline and an image. Like I said, none of these have had any styling added to them. They're all just here on the page without any kind of styling whatsoever. So let's talk about what we need to do first. We're gonna go here to this wrapper and we're gonna go ahead and give this a class. I'm gonna call this hover hyphen card, double underscore wrapper. We'll go ahead and hit create here. And all we need to do here is change this display to flex. And then we're gonna add a column gap here of 16 pixels, just because I wanna have a little bit of gap in between each one of my cards. For now, that's all we need to do to this wrapper. So I'm gonna go ahead and select each one of our cards in here by holding shift on my keyboard. And I'm gonna add a class to each one of these cards. We'll just go ahead and call this hover hyphen card and hit create. Now, because I had all four of these cards selected, it's gone ahead and added the class to each one of these cards individually, and that saves us from having to do them one by one. So let's go ahead and jump into this class now and start getting it styled. Now, because I don't wanna forget, I wanna go ahead and set the position on this to relative because we're gonna be using absolute positioning later, and I hate to make that mistake to forget to add that. Now we'll go back in here into our layout and we're gonna change this display from default to flex. We're gonna make sure we have our align items at the end because our text is gonna go at the bottom of the card. We'll go ahead and justify the content to the flex start here or the left-hand side. And we'll scroll down here until we see flex grow. Now I need to set that flex grow to one and the flex basis to zero. You're not gonna see a lot of changes right now, but it's gonna set us up to be able to do the effects here in a bit. Now I wanna give these cards a minimum height cause I want them to be fairly tall. I'm just gonna give them 500 pixels of height for now. Of course your design might dictate a different height but 500 was a good starting place for me on this one. Now I do want a little bit of padding inside my card so I'm gonna go ahead and lock all those different coordinates together and give it 32 pixels of padding. And we'll give it a border radius of eight pixels just to give these cards a little bit of a rounded edge. And I'm gonna need to set the overflow to hidden. So here under position, I'm gonna go ahead and change the overflow on both the X and Y axis to hidden. Now, the last thing I need to do for now inside this card is go into our effects and set a transition. Again, we're kind of setting ourselves up for the future here, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 0.25 second duration. We're gonna leave the transition property on all, and we're gonna change the timing function to ease out because that's just my preference for this. Now, next we need to style the images that are inside this card. I could go ahead and give them a class, but I'm creating kind of a self-contained component here, so I don't mind using a descendant selector in this case. So here, I'm gonna click on the More dropdown and click on New. 
And under the selector here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in IMG for our image. We don't wanna be using the compound selector in this case, and we'll hit create. What this has done is created a selector that will select all the images that are inside our hover card class. So here we're gonna go down to position and we're gonna set this position to absolute. Now we're gonna set all the coordinates here to zero for our inset or we could just link all those together. And we need to go up to our sizing here and set a width of 100% and a height of 100% so that it takes up our entire card here. Now I do wanna change the opacity of these cards. So I'm gonna scroll down here to our effects and under opacity, I'm gonna change this to 40%, which will just dim these cards out a bit. I also need to set the Z index to zero, which is gonna allow us to put the card behind our heading here. And we'll have to affect that Z index on the heading as well once we get to that. Now, just like I did before, I need to go ahead and add a transition to this. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with a 0.25 second transition. We'll leave the property on all, and we'll go ahead and match that same timing function with ease in out. Next, I need to select my H2 headings in here, and I'm gonna do that just like we did with the image. I'm gonna make sure I'm on that main selector of my hover card. We'll go into more and we'll click new. And here, instead of typing image, I'm gonna type in H2, which is gonna select this H2 heading inside of here. Now, doing a descendant selector like this could make things tricky if you were using this on multiple pages and maybe somewhere else it's not an H2, but for demo purposes, just using the descendant selector works well here. Now on this one, I wanna make sure to change my bottom margin to zero. By default, all these headings have a bottom margin and I just wanna make sure to get rid of that. I'm gonna set the minimum width here to max hyphen content. This is just gonna help us with our effect here in a minute since we have United States in here, which is two words. If this container gets too narrow, it might break into multiple lines and I just wanna avoid that from happening and setting this min width to max content should fix that problem. Like I mentioned, we need to bring those headings above our image here. So I'm just gonna change their Z index to one, which will bring them in front of those image cards here. Now we need to add a transition to this one as well, but this one is a little bit different. We're actually gonna be adding two transitions here. So the first one, we can do the same duration as before, that 0.25 seconds and the same timing function here of ease in out. But on the property, instead of doing all here, I'm gonna change this to filter. We'll go ahead and do the checkbox here and we'll add our second transition by pressing the plus icon. This one, we're gonna leave at 0.5 seconds. We want this to be a little bit longer. We're gonna change the property to opacity and we'll leave our timing function at ease in out, just like we did on the others. We'll go ahead and press the checkbox to save that there. And now we can start working on some of our hover animations. So we'll make sure we're just back on our main selector here by clicking that main button. And what we wanna do is target this card when it's hovered or focused. So I'm gonna drop down the menu here and we actually have a selector here already for hover and focus. So I'll just go ahead and click on that. What it does is add is hover or focus, which is perfect. Now, all I'm gonna to wanna to change on this is under our layout, down here under our flex grow, you know, we set this to a flex grow of one originally, but when we hover on it, I want this to actually be a flex grow of three. So with that set, now you can see when we hover over any of these cards, the one we're hovering over gets a little bit bigger, about three times bigger than the other cards here. Now, another effect I wanna add on here is when I hover over these cards, I want the image to get a little bit brighter. Right now, the opacity is set to 40% and I'd like to bring that up. So again, I'm just gonna make sure I have one of our cards selected and get into our hover card class. And here we're gonna have to create a new selector. So we'll go ahead and do new. Now this time we are gonna be using the compound selector because we wanna target this when it is hover comma focus. And now we're gonna target our image. So I'll just do a space and then IMG. So now with this selector created, we'll just scroll down here into our effects and we'll change this opacity to 80%. So now when we hover over it, you can see the image gets a little bit brighter. Instead of the 40% opacity, it now has 80%. Now, the last thing we need to do is set up the selector here to give our text effect. What I had in the beginning that I showed you in the demo is when you hovered over one of these cards, the other headings here would blur and then disappear. Now, when you didn't hover over anything, you could see all the headings again. 
To do this, we have to use a pretty complex selector. I'm gonna go ahead and include that down in the video description below so you don't have to try to type out everything I'm typing here, but I will go ahead and walk you through setting that up. So we need to select our wrapper here and then our hover card wrapper class. And we're gonna go ahead and use the more menu to create a new selector. Now this time we are gonna be using that compound selector and we're gonna type in colon has and then open and close our parentheses and put our cursor back in between these. Now in this we wanna do colon is, open and close our parentheses and put our cursor back in between them. And again, we're gonna be doing hover comma focus and then we can get outside of those parentheses. Now we'll do a space and we'll do dot hover hyphen card. This time we're gonna do a colon and not. We'll open and close our parentheses and put our cursor back in between them. And we can do colon is, open and close our parentheses, put our cursor back in between it and do hover comma focus. And we'll get outside of all of those parentheses there. Then we can just do a space and an H2. Like I said, this is a really complex selector here, but essentially what it's gonna allow us to do is select all the H2s when we're hovering on a card, but only the H2s that are not being hovered, which is kind of a confusing concept here, but it gives a really cool effect. Now, all we need to do on this is go down to our effects down here, and we wanna add two effects to it. The first one is the opacity. I wanna change that opacity to 0%. So you'll see now when I hover over these cards, the other titles are disappearing, which is exactly what we wanted. However, I also wanna do a bit of a blur effect here. So we'll go under filter and we'll have blur selected. Five pixels is fine and that's the default that comes in. We can go ahead and use that checkbox to apply that filter. And now we see we get that perfect effect here when we hover over these cards, all the other titles kind of blur and disappear, which is just a really neat effect. Of course, you could come up with all kinds of ideas here, but just the subtle opacity and blur does a really good job. Like I said, I put that really complex selector down in the video description below, so you can just copy and paste that. Just make sure if you use different class names than I did, or if you're not doing those nested selectors, you're gonna have to replace some of those things inside the CSS. The selector system in Generate Blocks allows us to do some pretty incredible things. But if I'm honest, I was actually able to write all the CSS for this quite a bit quicker than I was able to go through and figure out how to do all the different boxes inside Generate write blocks. So I think there's still times when I might go and just write the CSS instead of fiddling with the UI. Hopefully you found this video interesting or helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.